let's just lift our hands and raise our voices and praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for everything, Jesus. You are great, God. We praise you, Jesus. Have your will up on this service, God. Thank you for everything that you do, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Real quick, we're going to, if everyone will stand, we're going to go in prayer. We're going to pray for this service. And if you need prayer tonight, you can come down and the ministers will anoint you with oil and they'll pray for you. And just a couple of people I want to mention tonight is uh, Sister Janet Moore's sister, Patricia. We want to remember her. She's the lady I mentioned this morning that they were taking her off life support. We want to we want to pray for her. We also we want to pray for Brother Red Weatherford. We want to pray for Brother Larry Herndon. Let's pray for Sister Amanda Smith's baby, baby Paisley, the little baby that just had heart open heart surgery, and uh, we want to pay, pray for her. Um, we want to pray for my papa, Brother Roach. He's going in tomorrow, and they're going to talk about possibilities of what they can do to get rid of this cancer. Let's just pray that God will have his hand up on the doctors and that we'll make the best decision and that God will guide them. And if you need prayer this morning or tonight, come down and we'll pray for you. Let's just, if you have a need, just raise your hand. God knows your need. He knows how to answer your need. Let's just go to God in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. For everything that you do, God, I pray you have your hand upon all of these needs, God. Have your hand upon this service, God. Have your hand upon Paisley, the little baby, God. Have your hand upon my papa, Jesus. Touch the doctors, God. Touch everyone here that needs you, God. We need you. We are in great need of you, God. You are all-knowing, God. You are all-powerful, Jesus. Thank you, God, for the work of the cross. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. I just have a couple of announcements. Ladies' prayer meeting tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Wednesday night we will have service at 7 p.m. Don't forget about that. This Thursday at 6 p.m., Seniors Night, uh, bring finger food. Jesse told me this morning, I said something else. Finger food or something. Something. But bring... Not finger food, but finger food and a dessert. And next Sunday night, Sunday, August 30th, Section 8 Rally at Savannah at 6 p.m. Sunday, September the 6th, no p.m. service because that is uh, Labor Day weekend. And uh, Sunday, September the 13th, we're going to have church at Beach Lake in, in Lexington with First Pentecostal Church of Lexington. And we're going to start that at 4.30 p.m. So there's, there's a few things we want to remember there. If the ushers will come, we'll go ahead and take up our tithes and offerings. Offering. It's good to have Sister Shut here again tonight. Good to have them. I, I was talking about them when, when we were kids. I was talking about y'all coming down and bringing the girls. And uh, we always had my brothers, Ryan Roach. We were... The youth group there for a little while, it, it was just us four. Me and Andrew, Seth, Ryan Roach, Ryan Reeves, Brooklyn, it was just us and Tyler. Tyler was a little bit younger at the time, but they would bring, bring them down and we would have fun, hide and seek. Good memories, good memories. Anyway, let's go to God in prayer and we'll pray for this offering tonight. God, have your hand up on this offering, God. I pray that you'll touch it and, and make it out. For the betterment of your kingdom, God, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Let's give one more hand clap to the Lord. You may be seated. I'm talking just a little bit before I get started. <clears throat> so we had a wonderful men's retreat, and you know, I was thinking, well, it's hard to get a message together after you've heard Brother Osborne. I want to call him Dr. Osborne also. I've been doing it all week. My wife says, Brother Osborne. And then you hear Brother Hughes and uh, Brother Tony, I think that's how you say his name. And man, what mighty revelation these guys have got. And when you start putting the messes together, it doesn't seem like a whole lot coming from me. And it's difficult to do that after you've heard so much. You feel like they've preached it all, and they preach it so uniquely. You know, and they can take the same scriptures that we've seen and, and then bring out something new. And I love to hear that. I absolutely heard. I'll never look at that Jonah story again. Jonah and the well will never be the same after that story. That was a wonderful. That, to this day, my favorite message ever was bury me with Leah. But now it will be that last message that Brother Osborne preached, uh, the wares. But I love the Word of God, and I feel unworthy to preach it. For sure. And I'm going to use the young people a little bit tonight. And they're <clears throat> some of them are a little nervous, and, and that's okay. And uh, anyway, thank you about the, the men's retreat. We, uh, we got to play some golf before, and, and uh, that was so much fun. I, and I'm thankful. We got such a good pastor. He drove us all the way up there. We played golf with us and drove us back. And, let us use his truck, and he calls it our truck, but it's not our truck, it's his truck. And uh, we, uh, one of the things, I'm going to tell this little story, and then I'll, I got lots of stories, that's the way I preach, I can't help myself. Anyway, we, there was, uh, they give us four throws, you know, uh, it was an extension to your shot, you could, we could purchase four throws, or pitches, you know, we could pitch it if we were on the fringe we could pitch it closer to the hole and that was an extension to your shot and so the first three times we just pitched it on the fringe close to the hole so we just got a, an easy birdie putt and then we came up with a great idea well the next time we're out in the fairway we'll just throw it from the fairway to the green we're gonna have brother tony do this we've already used our throws and just chunk it about 60 yards up onto the green we'd have that for a putt and we almost did it, but then we talked ourselves out of it. We are going to use it later. And so I just thought, you know, at one of the tee boxes, I wonder how far you can throw a golf ball. And so I went and got a ball in the bag, and, man, I just I threw it as hard as I thought I could without my shoulder, just dragging my shoulder back to the card afterwards. And so I threw that ball, and I promise you, I didn't make it from here to the back of the church. I threw it with all my might, and it just didn't go anywhere. And they laughed at me. You know how men are. They laughed at me, hurt my feelings. Laughing at me, running back to the car, getting a the ball. They all could do better than that. See, a golf ball has no weight to it. It's meant to be hit with a club. And all of them went out there chunking those golf balls, and no one threw it further than I did. Them big, mighty men. It's hard to throw a golf ball. You need to go out there and try that. That was funny. We had such a good time. But I want to talk to you some tonight that's I've been thinking of, and the men's retreat really helped me with this, you know, thinking about some of these things. And um, our lives are being watched by our young people. It's very important how we live our lives, how we conduct ourselves. Are we holy? Are we doing the right things? They're watching us. I remember as I may have told this before, and you may have remembered this, but when I first opened my computer business, I was working on computers everywhere, anything I could get my hands on. And we lived on Allen Lane, and I remember I, was, I worked on a few computers on my floor there on, on the carpet. And I'd gotten up and walked away, and Eli was a little bitty, I mean, maybe case in size, just roaming around the house, you know, getting anything he could. And he'd seen me work on those computers, and he picked up my screwdriver. Man, he was just all in that computer, just doom, 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 doom. Because he'd seen me. He'd seen me do that 
get inside those computers with that screwdriver. A computer man really only needs a Phillips screwdriver. That's all he needs. But he'd seen me do that, so that's what he was doing. He was doing the only thing he'd seen his father do at that computer, which was with a screwdriver. So they're watching us. Our lives are under a, a huge microscope. And we have to be careful the things we do so that we may portray a holy, sacrificial, pure lamb so that they, because they're wanting to be like us, they're following. So I want to talk to you on a subject tonight called the pattern. The pattern. Exodus 25, and verse 8, if you want to stand for the reading of the word. And this is the tabernacle plan, which I love. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them according to all I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments ever thereof, even so, even so shall you make it. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this word. God, I thank you for all that you do. Lord, I'm a nothing, I'm a nobody, Lord, without you. But with your spirit, we're overcomers. And God, we ask you, Lord, to anoint the word, anoint the young people tonight. And God, we thank you for all that you have done in the name of Jesus. Let us all say amen. You might be seated. So I was thinking about these patterns and blueprints, patterns and blueprints. And and we have things to go by in our lives. And as Moses um, was about to build this tabernacle, God gave him specific a pattern. When Noah went to build the ark, there was specific things that God told him to do. And it was a pattern, and it was a blueprint. And God said, do it just like this. Make things just like this. And all of our lives, if you look through the Bible, you'll see that there are patterns and things that have happened through the Bible. They typify, they shadow something. It was this because of this, and it was this because of this. But not only that, people patterned after people. Elijah and Elisha. Elisha followed Elijah everywhere. There were people that patterned other people. I was thinking uh, since golf has been on the brain probably too much lately, Phil Mickelson, the way he learned how to play golf was his dad, when he was a toddler, set him in front of him as he was hitting golf balls on the range. So he would set him in front of him so that he could see him that he wouldn't hit him with the golf club. And so he put him right in front of him. And Phil was right-handed, but he'd seen his dad hit those golf balls over and over again. And Phil, as he grew up, started mimicking his dad left-handed because he was mirroring his dad as he swung a golf club. Now Phil has won many majors. He's went on to do great things. And I'm sure there's other men that Phil thought a lot of that played golf, but his dad was the one that he mirrored. He watched his dad. Feels right-handed on everything else he does. If he hits a baseball, he hits it right-handed. If he signs your autograph, he does it right-handed. But when he plays golf, he does it left-handed. That was because he mirrored his dad. So when God made us, he made us in whose image? His image. Things have been mirrored and patterned all of our lives. These are things that have happened all through our lives. And I was thinking, you know, there's a lot of people that I think a lot of. A lot of people I think a lot of. I think a lot of, you know, several leaders and and whatsoever, even in the government. I think of John Calipari. And and some people have their opinions about his, but he's Kentucky's coach. And, you know, I love Kentucky, so I think a lot of John Calipari. But I don't pattern my life after him. I can think a lot of someone, but I don't want to pattern my life after him. And so I started thinking about people that I do want to pattern my life at. And, you know, obviously our pastor. And, you know, we got such a good pastor. And you tend to get to know someone the more you're around them. What is, you know, where they're at, where they're living. That stuff has to eventually come out. And I am blessed to get to work out in the mornings. Brother Ronnie, uh, I get to work out with Brother Glenn. Brother Glenn's the same person. If you see Brother Glenn on the street, if you see Glenn, Brother Glenn here, 
He's the same guy. He does not change. He does not talk about people. If you do start trying to talk about someone, he'll change the subject. That's the type of guy he is. Pastor is the same way. He does not talk about people. He's not negative. He's positive. He's uplifting. It is such a joy to get to work out around him in the mornings. And sometimes I think we bother him. We're, we're following him everywhere he goes. Of course, now he's running more, so he don't lift with us as much. But uh, he's, he's never saying negative things. He's the same person in and out. He lives a holy life, not changing. These are people you want to pattern your life after. They're godly. They're holy. After, you know... If you worked out with him a few times or if you spent just a few hours, you really don't get to know him. But if you spend years with him, I've been in the gym with him for years. I've been here with him for years. He does not change. Brother Glenn does not change the same type of person that he was the first time I worked out with him to the, to the last time, which would be last week. The same type of person. These are godly people that you can pattern your lives after. I was thinking about Brother Roach. Um, Brother Raymond Roach is, is true blue. I mean, this guy does not change. He's the same smiling, friendly handshake you've ever seen him. Hard worker, always doing something at the church when he has time. He is pure, I mean, pure holy in my opinion. These are the type, he deserves that. <laughs> Brother Roach, I think so much of Now, there's a man that you can pattern your life after. Brother Chris French, I think so much of my brother Chris. Uh, you know, I look out my window sometimes and my yard's getting mowed. I'm like, who's mowing my yard? And Brother Chris is out there mowing my yard, moving stuff around so he can mow. I try to give him money. I try. He won't take anything. He just comes and he does. I see how he is with his daughter. He picks that girl up. He loves his daughter. And the work that he does, we have no idea what he goes through with that. There's so much to be said for someone that is consistent, faithful. They do the same things. They're, you can trust them. I, I feel like with Brother Chris, I could trust him with my life. If, if I needed one pill every day to live, and that pill was worth a million dollars, he'd give me that pill every day so that I may live. That's the kind of person he is. And there are others. There's tons of people that... I have in my life that if I had to pattern myself after to get to heaven, there are a lot of guys, even men in this church, that I could do. My brother Tony, I think a lot of. Um, of course, he don't like for me to, he says, when you get up here, don't say my name. Right? Just leave me out of it. I get it. But that's one time we'll just go around that. But my brother Tony is such a giver. Uh, sometimes, he, man, you can't even, we were fighting yesterday over to who to, gets to pay for dinner. And uh, it was left and right. And Tony will not let you pay for dinner. That's just not the type of person he is. Such a giver, such a heart for giving and helping. And I want to pattern my life after these people because I believe these are the type of people that can get you to heaven. And I was thinking uh, also in the Bible, come here, Eli. I was thinking about, now Eli's going to be, for this time and for this issue, he's going to be uh, Elisha for me. Now, Elisha, he said, and he left the oxen and ran after Elijah, and I'll be Elijah. And he said, let me pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and I will follow thee. And he said unto him, go back again, for what have I done to thee? And he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh with instruments of oxen and gave them to those people and they did eat. And he arose and he went after Elijah and ministered unto him. And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here, stay right here. Just, just stick right here. Stay, no, no, stay. He said, stay right here, I pray thee, the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he said, as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. I believe everywhere, every step that he took, Elisha stayed on Elijah's heels. He patterned his life around him. If he went north, that's where he went. Wherever that he went, 
If he went south, he went south. I believe Elisha couldn't get rid of him. I almost bet Elisha slept with one eye open. He was watching for him. Wherever he went, he was right on his heels. He was about to step on my shoes and pull him off. Now also Ruth, same thing. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law has gone back into her people and to her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. And the Ruth said, this is, she's talking to Naomi. She said, and Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee. Return from me following after thee, or wherever thou goest, I will go. Wherever thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, thy God my God. Where thou diest, I will die, and where thou will be buried. I will also be buried. The Lord do so to me more also, if thou be put to death. If aught but death part me and thee. And that's Ruth and Elijah both. Elisha both followed. And you can go sit back down. Thank you, boy. Yeah, let's give Eli a big hand. I believe they followed them to pattern their lives after them. They seen that there was a godly man or a godly person in their lives and they wanted to be just like them. And so saying all that and, and hearing Brother Hughes and all of them preach and teach, pour their hearts out, the question that I wanted to ask myself was, do I live the type of life that someone can pattern their lives after me? What type of life do I live? Would I want them to follow me? Would I want them to walk in my shoes, Brother Terry? Am I, is my standards holy enough? How do I treat people? Do I give? Am I, am I living holy? Do I pray enough? Now, I used to hear this song, he, and the song would say, I want to be more like you because he wants to be just like me. And the thing is, as I was asking those questions, the answer only comes in how close to God are you becoming? Are you getting closer to Him? Are you moving? If you're driving towards Him, then you're at a place to where someone can drive after you. Now listen. And, and here's some of the things that I, I was writing down. What are the things that I would want someone to follow after me? Do you hold your godly standards? David Bernard just posted a few minutes ago, modesty needs to come from the heart. Am I, am I dressing? Am I, am I conducting myself in a way I want someone to follow me? How do you treat people? Do you treat people with kindness? And I want to stay a little bit, just a second on this right here. And, and this is something that I made a mistake on not a few days ago. One of the things that I cringe when I hear someone say, gets on my nerves, gets on my nerves. And especially hate to hear this statement. And I promise you, I've never heard my pastor say these words, it gets on my nerves. Or especially, so-and-so is getting on my nerves. So-and-so is getting on my nerves. As if our nerves are that important that we should announce them to the people around us that there's someone bothering us. Now listen, the fruits of the Spirit. What are the fruits of the Spirit? But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Out of the nine fruits of the Spirit, six of them deal with how you treat other people. If you're not kind to other people, if you're not dealing other people kindly, with goodness, with temperance, with long-suffering then you are not living godly, I promise you. You're not showing the fruits of the Spirit. And just the other day, and I promise you, this is me, this is Brother Jeff hitting home, there was just a, a, a thing that was happening, and, and someone was saying some things, and I didn't really agree with everything, and, and we don't always agree. Look, we're human. That's what it is. We're human. And we don't always agree. And, and they kept talking, and... And then when they finally left us, I was like, man, I'm so glad they were getting on my nerves. And as soon as I said it, I knew I shouldn't have said it. You see, patience, long-suffering, kindness, meekness, gentleness, all these things. Could you imagine Jesus Christ ever saying something like, he gets on my nerves? 
or she gets on my nerves. That is nothing, that is never something, I bet the apostles never said something like that. The fruits of the Spirit are how you are with your place in God. So at that moment, I knew I wasn't where I needed to be with God. So my prayer life needed to come up. I needed to skip a few meals. See, the closer you are to God, the more patient you are with people. The further you're away from God, the less tolerant you are of someone. Now, there was a gentleman that um, I do work for. Uh, I, won't, I won't say any names, but he's such a nice guy, and he's a good giver. And there, there are attributes that people have that I would like to have, but then other attributes, not so much. He takes me out to eat all the time, and he's super nice to me. But then we, we went out to eat, and it was Longhorns where we went out to eat, and it looked like the waitress was having a bad day. She possibly was. Well, the peanuts that were sitting on the uh, table had got some water in the bottom of it, and they were stickier, or I guess he was thinking they were ruined or whatever. And man, he lit into her like it was her fault that those peanuts weren't fresh. He lit into her. They replaced her with another, and he lit into the second one. And as nice as he is, and as great as it was to get a free meal, it was not worth the presence of him to treat that young lady like that. And it was everything I could do to hold back to say something. And when we walked out, I got her attention and apologized as much as I could. I said, I am so sorry. And he was so rude to her. That is not a godly attribute. That is not something I would ever see my brother Roach do. That is not something I would ever see the pastor do. That is not a godly attribute. I do not like it when people mistreat other people. Look, we're not all perfect. And, and there are some people that have not been raised like you've been raised. And maybe they, they talk a little louder, Brother John Mark, or maybe they don't smell as good, or maybe they, don't, they just don't catch you the right way or whatever it is. But that's what long-suffering is. That's what meekness is. That's what patience is, is that you give these people some time. And maybe that God can work them into where what maybe you think is a holy person, or maybe you think is someone that you can deal with. But God is not pleased with if we treat someone like that. He will never be pleased of us treating people bad. And the woman at the well, he treated her kind. She had seven husbands. He didn't look down on her. The woman that they were about to stone, they said, Woman, were thou an accuser as he sent them away? He loved his people. And if you treat people bad... I can promise you, your life is not going to go well. You should treat people with kindness. Let's give the Lord a hand for that. Now listen, the Bible says, But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. God says not only good, be good to the, your neighbor, and to everyone else, but also your enemy, the people that come against you. God wants you to be good to everyone, not just a few. It's easy to be good to those that are doing good to you. It's easy for me to be nice to Brother Roach because he's so nice to me. It's so easy for me to be good to Brother Chris. He does a lot for me. But is it easy to do something for someone that's done you wrong? your enemy, someone that's constantly coming at you, someone that you feel is always doing you wrong. That's the ones that the Bible also says to love them. So are you kind to people? Do you keep your holy standards? Are you the blueprint? Are you the pattern that someone can follow and make it to heaven? How do you treat other people? I'm going to have some of the youth group come up, and I want you to know so that you can hear them. And, and I'm, I'm about done, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap it up. I'm going to let some of the young people talk, and I'll have a few more minutes. But I, I talked to them before, and I want them to come up, and, and they're probably nervous, and some of them that I haven't even told about are probably nervous. So I'm like, am I going to have to come up here? But I want them to come up and, and give me a name of someone they look up to in the church, someone they follow, someone they'd like to pattern their lives after excluding pastors. And that includes youth pastors, assistant pastors, and pastor. 
we all should look up to these men of God. We all should pick these as our leaders and the ones we want to pattern our lives after. But I want them to come up here and tell you some of the names of the other people they, they follow so they can hear some of your names. And if your name is not called, it doesn't mean that they don't look up to you or follow you. It's just that they have some certain ones they follow because they gave me some names as I was talking to them. And I want them to testify a little bit. This gives them a minute to get up here and say some things. And I'll line a few of them up and let them go. And if they only want to just say a name and walk away, that's what we'll let them do. But if they'll elaborate just a little bit, not preach, just elaborate. I think John John wanted to preach. He said, I'm going to talk. But uh, so give me, give me the first three, Connor, Lindsay, y'all come first, and Dakota. Y'all three come first, and then I'll bring three more. And I just want them to talk about someone that in this church they look up to. And if this mic is not up, can you please turn it up? Because I'm sure Lindsay's got a voice like a cat. Hello? Hello? Okay. Um, I don't know. I look up to a lot of people, most people in this church. But uh, somebody I really look up to is my grandma back there. <laughs> because um, she's a prayer warrior. And I just adore her because she never gave up on praying for D-Dad. I call him D-Dad. I don't know why. Everybody else calls him Granddaddy. I came up with D-Dad, but she never gave up. Most, I mean, a lot of people would be like, well, I've prayed for him for five years. You know, he's not in church. I'm just gonna, you know, it's all right. It'll be okay. But she never gave up praying for him, so I'm just thankful she's a prayer warrior, and I look up to her for that. Praise the Lord. Um, Whenever Brother Jeff uh, came to us with this idea, in Sunday school, I knew right away um, who I would say, and that would be my dad, because uh, he's always been faithful to church, always been a tither and a prayer, and uh, he's just always been there for us whenever we need him, so. I kind of have two people that I would really like to model my life after and they kind of you know brother Roach is the first one and he's just one of the best men of God you could ever imagine he's faithful to church he's went from being in a pastor in position to you know he works the lots he sits on the pew and he supports the current pastor and he's just he'll do anything you don't even have to ask him to do something he's there to do it and he was my mom's pastor, you know, back when she was, I think, teenage years. And uh, she talks all the time about how great of a pastor you were and all the many things that she learned from you. And she passes that on to me. And between you two, I've been so greatly impacted. And my mom just has one of the best attitudes that I could, I mean, I'm just blessed to have her as my mom to see her in my everyday life and the great attitude she has and great perspective towards life and she's always there to give me the right encouragement and right advice and I just if I I feel that if I model my life after these two I'm modeling my life after God and I just want to live for God the best I can and be used to God as both as both of them have and I appreciate both of you too. Praise the Lord. One of the people I respect the most, I respect all of you. I love you all equally to the utmost extent. But one of the people I really look up to the most would be Brother Nick. I don't know if he's in here tonight. But he always has this perkiness to him that I can't ever seem to find out why. But he's, he's always the nicest person. I can't find out anything that he's said bad to someone. But... He always has a smile on his face. He's always at church. He's faithful. Whenever he can be, he's here. He'll always be someone who's nice and kind to me no matter what it is, and I'll try to find a way to be nice to others like he is. Uh, when Uncle Jeff first uh, told us about it, I didn't know who that would say. And then once we got to uh, the choir practice, uh, I knew who I'd say, and that'd be my Uncle Tony, because he's always helping us with the guitars and stuff. And uh, he's always got a smile on his face, and he's always willing to help anybody.
I'm going to cry before I even talk about her. But um, I admire Sister Linda. She's always been there for me when I need her. And um, when I first came to this church, I just felt a connection to her. And um, I love her, and I appreciate her. And she's a godly woman. And she's a great example, and I really admire her. Praise the Lord. I think if there was anybody in this church I would model my life after, it would have to be my grandma. Everything that she's ever done for me, she's put her whole heart into. She's such a prayer warrior. She never gave up on my family. She's the reason why I'm standing here. Thank you, Nana. I looked up to Brother Gary because he's always given for the church, and every time he's uh, the church doors are open, he's here. I look up to my Uncle Tony because he always gives stuff, and he's always just there for me if I need him. Well, when Brother Jeff told us that we were going to have to testify tonight, I'm not going to lie, I got really nervous. And I'm really nervous right now. <laughs> but... <laughs> Um, I really admire my granddaddy. He's a really humble and joyful person, and he really loves this church, and he loves God, and he loves giving me blackberry cobbler, and <laughs> he's a really, really great man of God, and I really admire him for that. Um, I've thought about who I was going to say forever, and uh, whenever Dad came and told us, well, he told me and Haley this morning before anybody else, and I thought of a person, and I thought of something to say, and then I thought of another person, thought of something to say, and I pondered on it, but then in Sunday school, I was sitting there, and I was watching my Aunt Michelle as she was giving us the word, and uh, she is someone that I really look up to. I mean, she puts up with my very impossible questions that I ask in there, and uh, I have ADD, so she puts up with that. And whenever I go to school and people come to me with questions, I always remember how she is with me in Sunday school. And that is the kind of person I want to be, somebody that will be like, okay, I'll get back to you on that. Let me go pray about it and read my Bible. And that's who I want to be like. When I figured out that we were going to do this, I thought of many people that I could say, but one is Sister Roach and how she always sacrifices and to make sure that this church is really clean and nice. And every time I look over at her during service, she's always worshiping, and that's just somebody that I want to be like. I want to be like my uh, papa, Dalton Reese, because he is so faithful to the church, and I really want to pattern my life around him. Well, going along with what Brother Branson and Brother Dakota said, um, Brother Roach, I mean, you're just, you're awesome, man. Just, who, who wouldn't want to be like you? Pastor, all y'all, y'all are fantastic. But excluding pastor, like you told me. Uh, I like the, my granddaddy. Uh, the faithfulness to church is amazing, and that's a great thing to have. I mean, if somebody can sit here and say that about you, that is amazing, and you want that. And also Brother Doug up there, uh, you know, all the stuff that he does, he's here all the time, doors open, everything that you need, he's got it taken care of. And you can call him on an off day, and he can be here, and he can do what you need to do. And, you know, he's had, you know, with Aiden, he has you know, many issues. And that's through all that, he's still here, and he still does everything just like you need him to. And that's who I want to pattern my life around. Uh, well, I want to thank my dad for my good looks and uh, uh, always bringing me to church. And <laughs> well, I look up to my mom for always getting us to church, and it's a little hard to follow up on that, but... Um, my mom always gets us to church, so thank you. Uncle Tony and Aunt Michelle. I look up to Sister Selena. I 
look up to my grandpa for bringing us to church even if he don't feel good. Carly? Come on. Is this okay? I look up to Brother Terry. He's always been a good person and he's always given. I really look up to my mom because she's a really godly person. And look how many kids she's put up with. <laughs> so I just really look up to her. Let's give them all if we can. I know there's more. I could get them all up here. but My point for doing that is, and I'm closing, Sister Lindsay. You can... My point for doing that is... <clears throat> isn't to hurt anyone's feelings that didn't get their name called out. They, they wanted to say five or six people apiece because there's so many people they look up to in here. But I want you to know they're watching you. They mirror the image that you're doing. So the next time you think about wearing something that maybe is kind of close to the line, the next time you're thinking about watching something that maybe is not so godly, or the next time you think about skipping a service because of this or that, or as pastor says, an excuse, not a reason. You think about the little wise that come up here and they're watching your every move. And if you push that line of morality back, then that's where they're at because they're watching you. Your every move, let us stand. Your every step, they're patterning their lives after you. You are their blueprint. And young people, you did right. You picked out some people that are godly, that are holy. Now listen, every one of them would have got up here and called their pastor's name. I promise you they would have. They would have called out John Mark and Sister Jesse. I would already heard their names called out. Sister Brandy, I heard her name called out. I knew they'd call leadership out. But I wanted them to call some other people out to let you know they're looking at every one of us and how we live our lives. And so we must be more like Him because they want to be more like us. Let us pray. Lord, we thank You, Jesus, for this service today. God, we thank You for each and every one of these young people. God, I hope and pray that each and every one here will live a holy and acceptable life. Lord, a, a reasonable sacrifice, a holy sacrifice unto you, God, so that our lights may shine bright and that the ones following after us may also shine bright. God, we thank you, Lord, for everything that was said here tonight. We thank you for our young people, and we ask that you bless them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And let's give all the young people a big hand as the pastor comes and closes us out tonight. This has been wonderful, hasn't it? Amen. We're going to have a baptizing. Sister Linda, you can take our dear sister. Go ahead and get her ready. Amen. Did she say who's going to baptize her? Well, Brother John Mark, you go back there and you do it. You're going to do the baptizing. Aren't we glad about this baptizing? Let's thank God for it. Let them be getting ready. Amen. This is wonderful, Brother Jeff. And this is a wonderful word, the pattern. And uh, I remember when I was raised up in church, I had key people that, that I would watch in service. And I'd watch how they worshiped and how they conducted their lives. And it really stood out to me. So we need to remember that uh, there's people watching us. Amen. And we want to be a good example for them so that they will live for God. I tell you what I want us to do. I want us just to come around the front now. And just stand around these altars. And let's just pray that God would help us be the men and women of God that he wants us to be right now. Could we? Let's just come and pray just for a little while here. Amen. Before our baptizing. That the Lord would just help us be the, be the people that he wants us to be. Let's just lift our voice and talk to God right now. No place, no place I'd rather be. Let's talk to him. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you will help us be the men and women that you want us to be. 
Help us to be the people you want us to be. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Help us to be a pattern. Help us to be an example, oh God. The example that you want us to be, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. like for us to pray for one another lay a hand on somebody take somebody by the hand let's pray one for another right now we're the body of christ here in this area lord help us to be salt help us to be light help us to be an influence oh god lord give us souls in this church let this church grow lord god bless my brothers bless my sisters bless this church oh god keep your hand on this church, oh God. Take us to where you want us to go, God. Bless our young people, Lord. Help them to live for you. Help them in school. Give them courage to live for you. Help them, God, to have wisdom. Help them to have the desire to do your will, to give their lives to you, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let's just worship a little bit now, could we? I worship your holy name right now, God. I magnify your holy name. You are great and you are greatly to be praised. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus, we worship you. We praise you. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. We're fixing to have a baptism. Let me mention something. I think it's September the 13th, and this is going to be a, a great day for us. It's on a Sunday, and uh, we've been announcing it. But we're going to uh, Beach Lake. Sep I think it's September the 13th on a Sunday. It's going to be at 4.30, and they've asked us to come join in with them. I think we need to bring lawn chairs. We're going to be outside. Our praise team is going to be singing, and we're just going to have a great time. Don't that sound, don't that sound good? Amen. That's September the 13th at Beach Lake. That will be our evening worship. There'll be, there'll be hundreds of people there, no doubt. And so I hope we can take at least 100, maybe, at least. We've got a good crowd here tonight. But we're going to have a great time September the 13th. Praise God. I'm excited about this young lady being baptized. And, uh, and she put on Facebook she's ready to turn her life around. Did y'all see that? And she's not going to look back. And she's fixing to be baptized in Jesus' name. Did y'all have a Bible study? Had a Bible study today. Had one before today, though, I think, right? Did you have one before? I, don't, I thought you did, but maybe you didn't. But this is the first Bible study. So she sees her need to be baptized in Jesus' name. She mentioned it this morning that she wanted to be baptized tonight. And Sister Linda said, I'm going to take her and teach, and I'm going to make sure she understands. And I, I like that, don't you? And she's been taught the importance of baptism in Jesus' name. It's important, y'all. i tell you why it's important, because the Bible says it's important. The Bible says it's important. So they're fixing to, it's fixing to take place right now, and I thank God for it. Amen. Praise God. Brother John Mark is fixing to put her down. In Jesus' name. Hope the water's warm. It's warm. Amen. Thank God for a babstery, y'all. At Mount Carmel. Let's thank God for a good babstery. And... Mount Carmel, our baptistry was White's Creek. And, but now they've moved up into the world. They're coming over here and using our baptistry, and I like that. Praise God. Isn't, it, isn't that a beautiful sight right there? Isn't that beautiful?
this is a Laura Taylor, and she's gonna she's repented of her sins, and she's wanting to be baptized in Jesus' name. And this is Brother Antonio's niece, right. so we're thankful for this. Yes. Feel good. If our pastor will say a prayer real quick for. Her. Praise God, Lord Jesus. We thank you for Sister Laura. God, she's already repented of her sins, and now she's going to be buried in your name, and her sins are going to be washed away. I pray, God, that you would just take her to where she needs to go. I pray, Lord, that you would just lean on you, and she would be submissive to your will. Let her live a spirit-led life. Let her be a soul winner. Let her be a pillar in this church, oh God. Let her be baptized and let her stay in church until you come back. And I pray God should be ready for the rapture when it takes place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Laura, I baptize you upon the profession of your faith in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Praise God. Halabahasha. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Shake hands and be friendly. Amen. See you, ladies, prayer meeting tomorrow night at 7, Wednesday at 7, seniors 6, Thursday. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.